Acts chapter 12, we read that Herod Agrippa had killed James, the brother of John. He saw how this pleased the Jewish authorities. Seeking further political approval, Herod then also arrested Peter and had him thrown in jail. He intended to have Peter publicly tried and executed during the Passover in order to gain further favor with the Jews. Meanwhile, the church in Jerusalem was in constant prayer for Peter. The scriptures tell us that Peter was sleeping in the prison, chained between two soldiers. Suddenly, an angel of God appeared before Peter. The angel awoke Peter and raised him up, telling him, Arise quickly. Peter's chain suddenly fell off his hands. The angel told Peter, Put your clothes on and tie your shoes. Peter did as the angel had instructed him. The angel then told Peter, Put on your cloak and follow me. Peter followed the angel, not realizing that it was real, but thinking that he was seeing some sort of vision. Once they were past the first and second guard posts, the angel and Peter then came to the outer gates of the prison. Beyond these iron gates was the city. These iron gates opened all by themselves. The angel and Peter passed through these open gates into the city and passed down one of the streets. Suddenly, Peter realized that the angel was gone. He then came to his senses and he realized that he hadn't been dreaming. It had all been real. He was now outside the prison. He was free. He said to himself, Now I know for sure that God has sent his angel because he's delivered me from Herod and the Jewish authorities. Peter immediately proceeded to go to the household of Mary, the mother of John Mark. Many believers were gathered there, holding a prayer meeting for Peter. Peter knocked at the door, and a girl named Rhoda answered. She immediately recognized Peter's voice and excitedly went to tell the others that Peter was standing outside the door. Ironically, those who were praying for Peter's release didn't believe her. They told Rhoda, you're crazy. But Rhoda kept insisting, no, it's Peter, I'm sure of it. Then some people said, well, it must be his angel. But Peter kept knocking, and eventually the believers opened the door and saw that it was Peter. Imagine their surprise. The scriptures tell us that they were astonished. We should pause and reflect on this. Here the disciples are gathered, fervently praying for Peter's release. But when he shows up outside the door, knocking, they don't believe that it's really him. We realize that even though they were the first century Christians, in many ways, they're not that much different from many of us. How often do we pray for supernatural intervention, yet when the answer to prayer actually comes supernaturally, we sometimes have a hard time really believing it. We can be simultaneously encouraged and challenged by this. On the one hand, we can be encouraged by realizing that the first century Christians were real flesh and blood people who sometimes struggled to believe in the supernatural intervention and leading of God. On the other hand, we can be challenged by their example by realizing that God does supernaturally intervene and that God wants us to expect His miraculous intervention, just as He expected them to believe and expect it. Let's learn from the example of these early Christians. Let's pray fervently for God's divine intervention. More importantly, let's expect Him to supernaturally intervene for His glory. Mm -hmm.